the non military. Now, when we get to after this, we're at, that's actually the new category for the haul videos. So, first update, then mi non military, and then the meat and potatoes, the surplus. Sometimes it may not be bad out there. Some of the some of the stuff may not be bad. So, let's get right onto the meat. Let's get onto the mil non military ones. Starting off with now, some of the stuff is I got from a Christmas from Christmas where I ended the production of the haul on the twenty before twenty fifth of it. So this is the Everstart Max. So if you all know for one thing, what's so different about it? It actually is you can charge this thing. It doesn't require batteries. Yeah, you can charge this thing. USB cord and everything. So, here's what it looks like. Goes lower, and there. Yep, it's actually not bad out there. The only thing I don't like is the, well, the silly color. Who knows? It's not really actually military-wise, but it's okay. The second one is these guys. Now, when you open them up, oh yeah, they can definitely... Is LEDs. Oh boy. Another one. Yeah, a pretty bigger one. Now, next up is the Quantum. Yep, there you go. Pretty bright and pretty big. Next piece is the Pro 4 Tactical. <laughs> That's, yeah, uh, calling it Tactical. Yeah, Tactical. Pretty bright, yeah. You might as well bring Night Vision along, calling it Tactical, when the Tactical word is pretty useful. Yeah, it's actually not bad. It's It does the job. Now, now let's get to, well, the set itself. Now, this is the Ozark Trails set. Let's start off with the flashlight first. A little orange button and everything. A little bright. A little power cord. A little fire starter. It's, uh... <clears throat> No oh, fire starter thing. Oh. Damn. Well, it does actually can start a fire if I can actually actually start the thing. Oh, who knows? Oh, we'll get to this guy later. A little knife, which pretty much more of a boot knife. Um, these guys are not bad. They're pretty sharp. And this thing is full tang wrapped around with paracord on there. Oh, oh this piece is supposed to be on the on the fire starter little axe there that has a hex piece in there yeah you could put hex on there and the nut bolts on there um again i didn't try these knives out so maybe i could do a review of that of that and of course this little big guy the basically well the i actually call this the knife shetty but yes Ones with the pretty long ones, but yes, they're, well, they're a machete. Well, in a pretty small form, like 12 inch of a blade. I know there's a name for this thing, but yeah, we're, we're going to call it machete. Nope. Get that bad boy in there. 
That's one I didn't try out too. Oh, and also came with a sharper t sharpener too. Another one that I actually liked, and yes, it's not really the real version, but it is a copy of it. <clears throat> it is the Ruko K1061A. I think this knife is not bad, and yes, this thing can cost up to $60. Yeah, yeah, this guy's like $60. I like the case itself, and the... It's actually pretty pretty good knife out there and it is pretty sharp out there so yeah it's a it's a decent one and another one and I'm gonna give you a funny story about this yes I went to the Renaissance festival and I managed to find this little bad boy out there and yes this is in Kansas City so bam now, this is the sax, and this is a, well, not an accurate historical thing, but it does actually a pretty cool one out there. I liked it because how big this monster blade is. Yeah, it's another one of these little silly things. More of a souvenir itself, because, you know, there's Pakistan on there, and you know... How much Pakistan will do is the hilarious way of trying to look so ridiculous and scary looking. I actually have a couple of them, including the one that looks like, you know, a big old dagger. Like, it's, like, curved. Like that's... Maybe if I can bring that bad boy out, I can show you and make a review for that. And also, the the, the whole sheath is not bad out there. It actually looked cool. So... And then I went to the, well, the swap meat store, and uh, I found this bad boy, alongside with another piece out there, which we'll get to that in there, which is the Jernico knife. I forgot the name of it, but you know, bear with me. This one I got for around $5. Yes, $5 for this bad boy. It's uh, not bad. The construction is nice, and it's a pretty not bad knife. So, now it's going in there. And it came with the cool leather sheath out there. Oh, let me get that. Ah, that's, oh, wait. Oh, wait. I, yeah, it has to supposed to be like this, because I don't want to break the le leather sheath out there. So... That's all out of the way. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of them all. And you all been waiting for. Oh, <laughs> wow. Let's do it. Ah, uh, back to the old military surplus haul roots. Now, yes, we're talking about the haul roots. So we're cutting them all into sections. So let's begin. Now, the first one we've got is the World War II wool sleeping bag. Yeah, this is for basically the inside for the sleeping bag. And why I'm actually pointing this out to be World War II, because of the date. Yes, it actually has a tag on there. Bag sleeping wool. 45, well actually, 4-3-44. So it's going to be April 3rd, 1944. And why I'm actually think this might be World War II, actually is World War II, because of this one right here. Yes, the back... Basically, the bottom of every single my videos, or rather my, well, basically my reviews. Yeah, this is the thing, very much the same wool color. Let's get to the next one. And then we get to the British Modular Sleep System. Now, let's talk about the lightweight and the, the medium weight. Now, I don't have the stuff sack and the, basically the liner, or the bivy sack. So, here is the, inside the component of it, you got these mesh, like, mesh pouches in there. And when you actually putting up the, there's also a mesh net in there. Let me, work, let me get working on that whole thing. Yeah, here are the little buttons out there. 
Do I actually have to remove these buttons for the extra zipper for reason? At least it wasn't hard like the OTV body armor, where that was a pain, major pain in the neck. There we go. And it got the zipper there. So, yeah, it's supposed to be like that. Let's... Yeah, this medium weight has a pretty long zipper that can actually turn into a glorified blanket. Also, let me go point this out, and this is kind of every... This is kind of a, just a little heads up over this. Now, when you got this one, when you get this from the mail, make sure you take the... Make sure you check all the pockets before you throw it into the washer... Unlike I did, which I pretty screwed that up. Yeah, pretty tiny pocket. That's actually for this little guy, which it came with two of them. Rather, one for this and the other one for the medium weight. So it's actually a repair kit, a repair slider, and it was in in there, and it was in the washer. So sorry for the messed up for that. That was pretty. Well, that's my fault for that whole thing, so so a little bit of a heads up there. If you get this, make sure you take these out before you throw it in the washer. So let's get to the medium weight. Here's the medium weight of it. Now, yeah, it's basically... And again, just take that out before you throw it in the washer. Now inside of it, there's two pockets in there. But everything else, this is like a pretty comfy sleeping bag. It's actually going on par with the modular sleep system. Now let's get to the next piece. So this is what it looks like with the... So this is what it looks like with the sleeping bag. Now, it's not this one. It's the last piece out here is the Russian Navy sleep... Russian Navy police blanket. Yes, I'm going to say this out here. I recommend buying this one. It's actually pretty soft. And unlike the other ones, this is actually pretty thick. Yeah, it, when I actually put this, uh, when I very much sleep with this, I could definitely know I replace the other fleece blanket I always sleep with. So, yeah, I recommend buying this. It's like, I got it for around $70, alongside with the other Russian pouches. And it's actually not bad. I actually like this the most out there. But, let's get on to the next topic. Now let's start off with the helmets, including the covers. Now, covers themselves, let's start off with those. It's the cover for the Fast Helm. This one, on the other hand, is the T-block pattern. Rather more rare piece. Well, technically for the rare, if you find the real one, those are rare. From the Project Urban Warrior, which I actually would like to find one of the real ones, so I can use those on my loadout. And put this guy up. We gotta fold the the helmets. You put a piece in there. Another one is the this camouflage. Now, unfortunately, disappointingly, there's just only one helmet, but the camouflage pattern or the covers for it. This one, on the other hand, is the Syntex Dutch helmet cover with this little elastic band. I was actually getting this for a particular helmet that I got, and possibly the next one. But it's actually great for my my Belgium helmet, the German helmet, well, Belgium helmet made from Germany. So, the Sherberth helmet. And the first, and the last of the helmets is this, the MK6. Yes, this one's actually a not bad helmet. I found this, uh, this actually is one of those modern, or rather, one of those ballistic helmets you can find at the surplus store for around 
ninety dollars. Yeah, I got that for ninety dollars. Now let's get to the next piece. Now let's get to the hats. Now for hats, they got a multi cam. Basically, um, yeah, the basically a boonie hat, multi cam. Or is it you? OCP? Um, who knows? Uh, yeah, th this is multicam, so, yeah, that's right there. And the hat itself, it's a cap out there, but the cover, or the camel color, is the NW Type 3. Okay, I'm gonna have to hunt down the NW Type 3. So, yes, I have, uh, I am certainly... The cover, or the color itself, it looks like more of a downward version of the Marpat. I don't know, if I got that, I could definitely do a comparison between those uh, camel colors. Now let's get to, basically, the next piece. Now, the next piece itself is now gas masks. Of course it is. It is my channel. So, I got the, basically, the cable cord for the C420 blower. And, uh, my biggest problem out here, now, I finally found this piece, but I think it's, uh, one of the biggest faults out there. It doesn't work. Let me show this to you. Maybe if I have a different battery, maybe that works. Because the one I have is, like, the, the one you have to use double, double A batteries for it. So, here it is. On. Get that focus. Yep. Yeah, on. Yep. Not working. Maybe I need to get a different battery. Maybe that will work. But, uh, let's get to the next piece itself. Which, of course, this bag itself. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I finally, uh, well, technically, I got, it's the same mask that I got. So, there we go. Yes, the Serbian M2. The biggest problem is that I got this for a reason, because... Unfortunately, this piece itself, when I was doing the disassemble video, that actually broke. So, I decided to buy this for around $50, so it took a long time out there. But not as a quite a little harder find piece, which, let me go show this to you. And, uh, oh yes. You know what I'm talking about. The Scott M110. Yes, this guy here. So, this is, I found this for around, um, $60. Yeah, this one's like $60. But what's interesting, not only the mask itself and the filter, which, yes, it did came with a filter. Which, it's right here. But it's actually the carrier itself and the contents inside of it. So, when I got this mask, it came with the MCU slash 2P carrier. Now, that's... Not, not, spe nothing special out there, but what's something special out here is, is the content inside of it. Yeah, I'll show you here. I got tags and everything. Look, serviceable tag out there, which, damn, that's interesting. Which, yeah, got some documents over these. Rather cool documents about it. Papers and everything. Now, if you want to see them, just pause on the button and and just read all this. Here's here's another one. Yeah, that that's kind of interesting. Individual field dressing. Yeah, it's like don't even have the piece in there. Of course, you got the waterproof bag. Little gasket piece, maybe it's uh, uh, no, it's gasket piece in there. A another tag out there. Yeah, that that that's real. And the little attendance record, chemical global. No, Chemical Biological Warfare Attendance Record. And this is what it is. 
Now for the next one is the Romanian M74. Yes, this is the Romanian M74. Now it does came with that uh, styrofoam piece in there. So I took that out because I don't want it to melt. Because if you put styrofoam on it, it, this thing will melt. So it comes with the civilian bag. And then this is the actual mask itself. Yeah, I even included the filter. Yeah, if you all know what this looks like, it's that M6, the Draeger M65. Or the one I have is the Air M65. Yeah. This one's another piece of surplus gear I found from Mickey Surplus. And it's along, alongside with another one, which you all know what I did got at with the helmet itself, with the British helmet. Let's see. And our next and last piece of the uh, of the piece up there is this. Oh yes, you heard right. I'm talking about the tan version of the ANP VP F1. I found this up. Alongside with the helmet, yes, that British helmet, the MK6 helmet. I managed to find this for around $80 out there. So, yeah, bought those two ba bad boys alongside with the helmet cover that was supposed to be on the helmet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you actually want to know, I made a review for that, including the tan variant. So if you actually want to know, just revert to the my reviews of the... Uh, AMP and PVP F1 reviews. So let's get on to the next section of the pieces. And now we get now let's get to mess kits. Yes, I got this big old tray alongside with the other pieces that I will be pointing out. This one's uh, I think this is just a World War II replica fake canteen because it has the Japan on there right here. That was in occupied Japan. Yeah, a little dent up. But if I find the real one, I could do a comparison between these two. The pouch has, uh, well, basically a U on there. Old classic clip. Before it, uh, Alice jumps in. Now, this is not the canteen that I'm talking about, but it's the pouch it came with. This is the S, basically, SSO right here. It's actually, you gotta have to stretch it up to basically snap it all in there. Two USGI mess kits. Now, the reason why I bought two of these only by the oh, wait a minute look at this this one has a this one has a nap monarch on there if you can see it right there and the other one has a, on the other one has ea co don't get don't get started with that the ea company the ones where they basically says loot box is a surprise mechanics that's pretty dumb but it's actually the most important part about it is the mess is the utensils it came with. And I can do a comparison video between this. Alongside with that, this one comes with two of the pieces. But at least I've... Yes, I was basically catching some mess tins out there. But another piece that I did bought with that tin, with that whole tray, is this. A World War One mess kit. Let me open up that. Yeah, it's pretty hard to open this one up. But you'll get, you get what I'm talking about. Now, yeah. That, I can... This is my first World War One piece from the... From my entire surplus collection. Yeah. I could do a full blown video around this. So. Comment down below if you want to see that. Now let's get to the next piece. Now our next topic. Bags and, to and pouches. Now this one I got is a duffel bag. Of course it is. It has the two straps on there. 
Now on our next piece out there. This is the rubberized duffel bag. That's for clothing. The next one is a basically another bag out there or an ounce pack. Basically for sleeping bags and chemical suits. Which let's get to the next part. And it also is the field combat pack out there. Now looking inside of there. But there's also a stamp in there. There's also a pack field combat 1945. I also have the one that is a much more later variant out there. Let's get that pushed back in there. Oh, that's not good. Is this one here. This one's a rubberized version. And this one's a, more of a later variant out there. This one is the East German pack. Unfortunately, it does not come with the straps, so I might as well just go get another one of these. So at least I can actually have the actual deal to it. This one right here is the butt pack. Yep, just a butt pack. I got that because my other one... And it's, uh, this whole thing was falling off, so that's the reason why I bought that. For $12. This one, on the other hand, is a complete knockoff of the, um, Eagle Industries butt pack. It's in that, basically, knockoff UCP camo. Yeah, this one's a pretty, much more of a, as you could definitely know, I can definitely tell from two variants of UCP. One in the real one, and one in this fake-looking one. Let's get to the pouches next. Our next piece is the... Is the paper bag, or the... Yeah, the paper pouch out there. It came with the... It didn't came with... I don't know, how do I supposed to attach onto it, but... Yes, this is supposed to put papers in there, or documents in there. So, that's rather an interesting piece about that and yeah you're just supposed to put papers in there so I know that's a little silly now let's get on to the pouches themselves now yes I'm putting the play carrier again now what I got here from this front here is the spoison for cell mag pouch and it was actually hard to put on that thing so but when you got it on that's pretty pretty good out there this one is the Kripiak or Crypec whatever um, it's a pouch for the play carrier it's actually supposed to put on the bottom of it like the groin protector This one, on the other hand, okay, this one, when I got this, it looks like a uh, rather generic, you know, chest rig out there, right until I decided to look, look pretty closely on this, and when I was actually checking on and think this might be like a cheap knockoff, oh, I got this for $25, I kid you not, and when I got, when I found out, and this did came with the holster itself, it turns out this is the, is a London Bridge trading piece. Um, the, oh wait, it's in the other thing, other mesh pocket. It turns out this is the London Bridge trading 1961. Yeah, right there. These things are cost around $300 on eBay, and, and what it came with, it actually came with four pouches, one for basically a smaller variant out there, for like a grenade pouch, two of them in there. This one on the other hand has like mag pistol round, pistol pouch on there, and these are for like machine gun type pouch. 
And these where you could put them in there, rather for inserts. Unfortunately, there's one problem out there. The strap did not, did, did not came with a strap. So I decided to get my, make my own strap for this thing. So there you go. And also it came with the holster as a little free compliment out there. Oh yes, the now it's not the vest itself what I'm talking about. It's the pouches that I got. I finally got the grenade pouches. I got this for around 2016, around a hundred dollars, and it unfortunately did not came with the pouches out there. So I got the correct matching grenade pouch. Mail for this one did not, unfortunately. And when I got to I managed to make the full video about this, like the comparison between it, right next to another one that I will be pulling out. Now, this one, it came with the BSR-98, um, the one I got. And the other one, which I mentioned to point this one out here, this one actually said, on the description on the on the listing out there, says that it's been firmed in Siberia. And I got this alongside with the Navy... Well, basically a navy fleece blanket, which I do uh, mentioned, like like as I mentioned in there. Oh. oh yes, the FLC. Now I managed to get all the parts for it, except for like the the bump, the uh, big old pouch for it. But I managed to get. And, uh, I'm gonna pull this. I also got a couple pouches, like, uh, things like the, uh, now, for these guys, it came, it did came with another one of these in there. So, it's an, just a bonus out there. To grenade, uh, tan grenade pouch. I got that when I was getting the chest rig, the 1961. And here's the used to be pistol one. And uh, if you quite noticing from that whole particular piece, what I'm actually talking about, look at this. Here's the knockoff, and here's the real one. Um, it, I know for the naked eye out there, it looks very different. And you know, as you can see the... Yeah, it's a little more darker than this, and yes, I am basically comparing two terror one of the rather controversial camo, the UCP, which, yeah, it's quite controversial, and it really didn't get the job done. I think it could be good for snow use, that's what I think it could be good at, but, but good gravy. Yeah, it's pretty controversial camo, and yeah, it is pretty bad. Of course, I have the canteen pouches for it on both sides out there. Now, let's get to the the re last remaining pieces right before we get to the next, next deal. The Russian AK mag pouch. Rather, a very common Soviet com block type mag pouch, and not like the 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 Technicom pouch I have, which those are completely a pain and a bum to find. This one is the ABU pistol mag pouch, which yeah, that's basically what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. This one is the medic field dressing kit. Yep, here it is. Dressing, first aid, field, individual, troop, camouflaged. So, yeah, this is what it is. I got it un unboxed, or rather, unopened, so I'm going to keep that unopened. I'm sorry, with the pouch in there. This one's the Moisen Nagant 
well, basically pouch for your Moisen Megant out there. This one is for the grenade pouch for the Yugoslavian, of all places. I didn't know this was not Russian, but it turns out to be Yugoslavian. And I can see the the leather piece that i noticing. Maybe I can show that whole Yugoslavian web gear that I have. Maybe in my review I can bring this out. And finally, and not at least... The little oil kit. Yes, there's oil cleaning kit for your AK. And this is the pouch it came with. I got this for around twelve dollars at the at the the swap meet. Now let's get on to the next topic of pieces. And then certainly not, le not least, the extras. Now, extras are basically pieces that's not really much large kit out or a large amount of it so let's begin talking about smallest to the biggest shall we now first of all i got these oh here now here is the patches for this tactical air commando i forgot what mark what uh ver i know these are all air force but these are basically patches so there we go. If you want to guess any of them, comment down below. I want to know. Got this guy, the basically U.S. Navy flashlight. Now, it doesn't really work, but this actually is one of the pieces. Along with another piece that I did got. A little whistle. Yep. These were both come with it. Here is a strap that I actually don't know. Maybe this is a vehicle strap, so, for a Jeep. This one, oh yeah, these are all from that combat pack that I mentioned. The one with the, not the rubberized one, but the the older variant. And this one, I think this must be Auscam, you know, Australian camo or something. The, I want to know, so it looks interesting. And of course, a BU belt. Alongside with that, of course, you got. Uh, oh. I got uh, also this one. This is a World War II ammo can. Like, pretty good condition out there. All the ones I can find. This is the one I can possibly purchase actually this is one of those that i tried searching for these and they're really hard to well i know they're easy to get but sometimes people buys it so this one i got lucky over it for around ten dollars this one on the other hand ugh. now this thing is for the destroy it's the one of 105 millimeter basically shell for the destroyer so that's pretty big out there and these two bullets now this one is for the bradley which that's what it looks like and this is for the oh yes the a10 warthog now yeah, this is the bullet for it you know the memes that i've seen the most yeah, that bad boy. And possibly the best one out there. And we got this guy here. Now, I got this at a... Um, now, it turns out this thing is a Japanese bayonet. But the thing is, this is for school training use only. And because of the crudely built and lacking of a stamp out there. Thus, this being a, a pretty... Uh, interesting piece out there i got this for around 30 dollars and it says was unknown bayonet yeah that's 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 what it's called of course we got uh now if you see my uh my recent videos about the world war ii gas masks and the u.s parts this is uh, basically what i got a world war ii u.s uniform now this one is the 11 dies which that's for, that's the patch it has. 
got two markings on there. And it actually has a bag full of, like, bag filled with the buttons out there for things like these guys. So, yeah, they're, they're included with it. This one right here is the Dutch BDU. It's an olive drab. Hey, that can actually go with my, my helmet, or rather my helmet cover, because it is Dutch piece. There you go. And also came with the little patch in there. Oh yes, you heard right. Actually, to be fair, I prefer gun rights than, than gun laws out there. Oh yes. And then you got this thing here. Now, this is the manual common tasks. Got this for around $6, and it's worth a 20 these days. And then, certainly and not at least, as I mentioned in my, well, rather in my haul video from 2020. So, as you could definitely know, I've actually predicted something. And, uh, oh yes, this does concludes it. Oh yes, the PBS 14. Certainly the most expensive and not at least. Oh yes, you heard right. Now it actually did came with a manual. Let me go bring that up. It's, it's in here. Here's the manual to it. Yep. Now, I think that is all the pieces of the of the surplus haul of 2021. I think my prediction for this, I'm buying another one of these for, and then the bridge mount piece, which is from TNVC. That's what I'm planning on buying. A battery pack, the Wilcox attachment, so I can basically use a dual tube run. So that wraps up of the 2021 surplus haul. I'm Martillboy, and I'm signing out. Hope you guys see you next year.